It is a cloudy day today, but I still feel the sun beaming down on my back. It's hot, but it's beautiful. The fields, the friends, the rest at the end of the day, everything's so beautiful. No matter how much I sweat, I cannot be sad. I feel as if I'm surrounded by beauty. But what is beauty? There is an ambition in the history of art to capture an essence of beauty, to represent a part of the material world or a part of the metaphysical world. This grew over time to become less about spectacle and more about representing experiences and the beauty of the world. The very idea of beauty itself imbues a meaningful and sensory feeling. Yet, in this ambition for a perfect and elegant representation, there is inadvertently a space created for conflict as well. And in that conflict, we are able to find countless interpretations of what beauty is. We went to the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam, and there was the fields covered in snow painting that he had. It was absolutely beautiful. And right when I saw it, we were just passing by it, and I was like, I'm going to go back to that one, because I love I loved just the, the color he used and the techniques. And I don't know, it's so impressionistic, and I love that painting. But it's hard because when something's beautiful, you can't really classify what makes it beautiful. It's just something innate inside you that you just kind of know, and it's kind of just natural to feel that. The painting that he had, the painting that he had, Van Gogh made this painting in his signature style. But why? Why was he involved in the creation of this art at all? He must see the innate beauty in the world, but why does he have to share it in such a style? What is the point of an artist in the creation of allegedly beautiful art? What if the artist was completely unknown? Now this has been standing here for centuries. The premier work of man, perhaps, in the whole Western world. And it's without a signature. Shot. A celebration to God's glory and to the dignity of man. Ours, the scientists keep telling us, is a universe which is disposable. You know, it might be just this one anonymous glory. Of all things, this rich stone forest, this epic chant, this gaiety, this grand choiring shout of affirmation, which we choose when all our cities are dust, to stand intact, to mark where we have been to testify to what we had it in us to accomplish. Our works in stone, in paint, in print, are spared, some of them for a few decades or a millennium or two, but everything must finally fall in war or wear away into the ultimate and universal ash. The triumphs and the frauds, the treasures, and the fakes, a fact of life. We're going to die. Be of good heart. Cry the dead artists out of the living past. Our songs will all be silenced. But what of it? Go on singing. Maybe a man's name doesn't matter all that much.
for one strong meaning of beauty in painting, one can easily find the prelude to reminders of mortality in the memento mori, a signal and icon of the fate of each and every one of us, regardless of our deeds, impact, possessions, or achievements. We will all turn to dust one day.それじゃ竹井さんが正しいとしましょうか。歯を食い縛って汗を流して、その生きた芸術作品ができたとしますね。しかしそれが美味しさを奪えることはどうするんですか。その美しさはどうなるわけ。作ったあなたがどうにか
different kinds of beauty in this world. I feel like right now in the world, there's a lot of natural versus unnatural beauty where natural beauty just comes from like, you just feel it from the heart and like unnatural beauty is just visual pleasure or like just like a sensual pre like pleasure that doesn't satisfy the heart but it satisfies, it satisfies the eyes and like the brain. I feel like beauty is one universal thing, like not what beauty means, but that feeling that it creates inside of us is universal. So no, I don't think there's different types of beauty. Beauty is just beauty. I don't know. I feel like it's like a, just a spectrum depending on like the person, I guess. Um, different kinds of beauty. I will say so, yeah. There are beauty of nature, of people, of art, of film, all kinds of things. Beauty in one place means something completely different in another place. And there's like so many things that I don't find beautiful, but like someone else could find to be the most beautiful thing. And like, I wouldn't say that they're like wrong and I wouldn't say that I'm right. I feel like it's too um, complex to, I guess, like put into one box. So I definitely say there's like different kinds of beauty for sure. If death is natural, does that make death beautiful? It has been argued by many religions for thousands of years that the ultimate goal in life is to die a meaningful death. One can live a meaningful life full of child raising and discovery, but we will all ultimately die. So make sure that your death is with meaning. Do not die a shameful death. Do not die at the hands of your enemies. Do not die unless you are certain that this is all that is left for you. Is that beauty? Is beauty found in the certainty of the inevitable? Or is beauty found in the uncertainty of death itself? As a believer dies, is it beautiful when he asks himself, Will I make it to heaven? Is there beauty in leaving loved ones behind? Is there a simple beauty in, in existence, just as there is a simple beauty in inaction? If death can be beautiful, can creation of life also be beautiful? If life is also natural, does that make life beautiful? Many religions for thousands of years have argued that the ultimate goal is to live a meaningful life. A person can grow from a helpless little baby to a strong woman with a large family. A person can live alone, far from the nearest hospital, secretly fearing that if something bad were to happen to them, nothing could be done. Is that beauty? Is beauty found in the uncertainty of every passing minute? Or is beauty found in the certainty of time, as a person waits every day for nine months as their child grows inside them, or as a person grows old with those they love. Is that beautiful? What isn't beautiful, if anything? Human beings are capable of some of the most, um, the ugliest things that uh, exist on this planet. So I'd say human nature is pretty unbeautiful. <laughs> Must artists create beautiful things? Take the contrarian artist who spends their time distilling that which they find ugly into the most repulsive version of it. Could I not say that I find that beautiful? For each version of an object, of a sound, or of 
something, anything that holds beauty for an individual? Is there a unique perfection in each object? There's traditional beauty and there are common ideals that are considered beautiful. But what are the other elements that create the beautiful? And what of those things that are considered not beautiful? Have we lost beauty? No, I don't, I don't think so. Because beauty is a feeling, and I feel like some things in their ugliness can, can give a beautiful feeling. Well, I think beauty is honestly just subjective to the person. But I mean, the majority can come to a common decision on something and say, okay, this is beautiful, or okay, this isn't beautiful. But a lot of that has to do with taste and what's trending or what's, what's beautiful at that time. Usually death isn't that, isn't really beautiful, or like sad things. But at the same time, they can be beautiful if you make them to be do we as humans want to preserve beauty because it does not last? It seems human nature to strive for perfection. We push our limits in search of what is deemed unobtainable, but of course we understand things will not last forever, even if we try to ignore that. Depictions of age have coincidentally stood the test of time. Even if our bodies do not last forever, our art does live beyond us. The past still speaks to us through the art of history, even if it is presented in our modern contexts. We want to preserve. To learn from the past is also to remember the past. In this sense, we should preserve. It feels right to do so. But if we find means of prolonging ourselves past our expiration date, what happens? How far removed are we from the romanticism of the past and the perceptions of beauty held by artists who could never concern themselves with the preservational abilities of technology? Imagine a new world, a place of eternity. It would be a world in which one chooses to age, a world without an absence of loss and mourning. Art would have no need for preservation, nor would any fragment of beauty. Yet in this paradise, we do not have everything we strive for. The element of natural beauty would be forever eradicated by the mere conception of this type of universe. It is a world wholly of our own creation. Does nature exist in a world like that? In this sense, even in our highest ability to be everlasting and reach the unobtainable, we would be without anything natural, and a void of the self, the sublime lost to the physical realm. We know that from such sinking into the decay of all that is beautiful and perfect, two different mental impulses can emanate. One leads to the painful, world-weariness of the young poet, the other to rebellion against the fact being asserted. No, it is impossible that all these glories of nature and of art, of our sensory world, and of the world outside should really melt into nothing. It would be too senseless, and too foolish to believe it. They must be able to continue in some way, removed from all destructive influences. But this thirst for immortality is too clearly a product of desires to lay claim to reality. What is painful may nonetheless be true. Art dies as well. Just like us. But I think art has a longer time on this world than we do. But yeah, it does die. It is a trick. I feel like because it's just like us and because everything dies and so art dies with it and we all have something in common in this world, at least 
we know that we're connected by that same truth and I don't think that's sad or bad in any way I think I think it's beautiful <laughs> yeah art and beauty really I think they do have a point where they can end and no longer be beautiful just because like something one thing can't be beautiful forever like everything us what we are this planet it all is finite it's sad it's sad it's it's a tough little paradox that we live in but we just gotta see the beauty in things ourselves for when when we're here when we get to experience these things if it's art as a collective as a whole i don't think it'll ever die out like even if there's species on the other side of the wall i swear there's gonna be art like there it's just if you're not a robot i feel like art is essential and it's just something that makes me really happy or confused or you know anything else no i think like the arts or like i don't think it's ever gonna like disappear because there's always going to be creative people and I feel like unless there's like nuclear holocaust and everybody died like art's never really gonna and even then like there might still be art instead of people you know what I'm saying so no I don't think I don't think it'll die to be honest it depends I think uh, depends on the art I think the art that the creator put more work into it will maybe last longer. Uh, the cheaper it is, you know, it couldn't last the test of time. It's really, I think, I believe time is really something that, uh, yeah, test beauty. The value of transience is a rarity in time. The restriction and the possibility of enjoyment increases its preciousness. I found it incomprehensible that the thought of the transience of the beautiful should cloud our enjoyment of it. As for the beauty of nature, it will come back after every winter's destruction in the next year. And this return may be called eternal in proportion to our lifespans. The beauty of the human body and face we see disappearing forever in our own lives, but this short life adds a new one to their charms. If there is a flower that blooms for only a single night, its flowering does not seem to be no less splendid, nor can I comprehend how the beauty and perfection of the work of art and the intellectual achievement should be devalued by their temporal limitation. There may come a time when the images and statues that we admire today have crumbled, or a race of humans comes after us that no longer understands the works of our poets and thinkers, or a geological epoch may arrive in which all the life on earth ceases. The value of all that is beautiful and perfect is determined only by its significance for our emotional lives. You know, the world has its own way of running, even without us. And s simply, that's just beautiful. Once we attain something, like, what's there after that, you know? It's just, I feel like art, when art is limited, or when people are limited, that's when, like, good things come out of it, and, like, innovation and everything. So, yeah, I feel like... The fact that we cannot attain something is what keeps us going, you know, and what keeps us making things better. And I think it's a, it's a good thing. I mean, there's plenty of times where 
logically it shouldn't be beautiful, but to your to your feeling, your in your heart it is. So I think that's I don't know. Yeah, that kind of it's the whole intellect versus innate feelings. There's certainly a beauty in the similarity of what an artist saw and what he created from that beautiful thing that he saw. But that beauty loses its power. If I can't witness an emotional presence of that person while he saw the beautiful thing. To feel the beauty of something is to recognize it. And um, if an art has that proof of the artist's recognizement of beauty, then he did a good job. Because you don't only see the thing that was beautiful, but you see that connection that the beauty created with that person. And at the end of the day, this connection created a third beautiful thing. So I think they are concilable. Is that the word you use? Yeah. Yeah, I think they are intellect and emotion. Cool.